Thanks for stopping by guys and welcome back to Scrap Mechanic. Now today we're going to be looking at some new cannon designs, but before I talk about that I do want to mention a few things. Um, first off, for anyone who's wondering where I've been with Scrap Mechanic, I've been doing a lot of things with Scrap Mechanic behind the scenes. Unfortunately up until now I really haven't had anything to show off, so that's why there haven't been any Scrap Mechanic episodes right recently. The other thing is the new update. Um, a lot of people may mo may know it as the momentum update. There are two major things that I'm going to be using for this episode. Uh, one of which is the changes to the explosives. Explosives now do less damage to armor, such as metal, uh, what is it, maintenance ship blocks, and the path lighting blocks. So that is all well and good. As well as the momentum itself. Um, I'm not going to be going into any detail, but you should hopefully know what that is. Um, unfortunately, the momentum update did break most of my cannons. Uh, the majority of the bearing glitch cannons do not work. Cannons such as the Mark 9 don't work at all. The armored car works somewhat. They technically do work, but they're very finicky, easy to break, and very unreliable now. So, I've been working on improving them and making new cannons. And that is where these come in. This here is the cannon itself, and this is the armored car that is using it. Uh, this is a slightly different cannon than what's in the car, but for this purpose it will work just fine. Quickly grab the ammo and the cardboard. This still uses a bearing glitch, but it now utilizes the momentum system. So real quick, if we come in here and put down two cardboard, put down your ammo, press one which charges and two which fires this works really well it is much smaller than my old bearing glitch cannons it's more reliable especially in this update bearing glitch cannons don't really work at all um, it isn't as powerful and it's not as easy to implement sometimes so there are those two downsides but I am really happy with it the general function itself, if I reload this real quick, it uses the bearing glitch, so there's two of them down here. You press one, it charges, which I'm not even sure. Yeah, this is still, I need to remove this round because it's still in its charged state. I need to discharge it and then reload. But the bearing glitch charges, then this first cannon here on the left fires, which removes the cardboard right below there which allows this arm to swing forward with rapid speed and then after a zero tick delay the second cardboard gets destroyed using momentum it launches the explosive out down the range so that works really well and really happy with it so that comes to the actual armored car the armored car the cannon is in here and you may notice the cannon is tilted that is because when the actual round is let go it is not going completely straight it does kind of go at an angle compared to the cannon so to compensate for that the cannon is tilted back inside the tank let's go ahead and place our round from here it works just like any other tank or armored car that i've built one goes left two goes up three goes down four goes right Five fires the main cannon, and six fires a little aiming machine gun. One other thing I should note with these cannons is because of where the bearing glitch is located, all of the torque comes from this axis, which is also what is used for aiming. This has a nice side effect that the actual recoil of the cannon is managed by the aiming system. With my old bearing glitch cannons, I usually had to have some sort of recoil dampening spring. But with this, when the cannon actually fires, you'll notice it rotates back. And it's easier to show with this because it has a barrel on it. So if I aim really far up. I already have this loaded. When I fire, you'll see the cannon goes back. And that is the actual recoil system. It wasn't exactly intentional, but I'm really happy that it works this way. 
and because it rotates on the same axis it elevates, there is no extra need for room. As long as you have enough room for the cannon to aim up and down, there's enough room for the cannon to recoil properly. So, quick drive around. It is a speedy little vehicle. Really nice, really maneuverable. I'm really happy with it. Um, this armored car uses electric engines. My old one used gas engines. But whenever you got onto a hill, the gas engines would roll. This one, when you get up to a hill, it stays nice and stable. Make it easier to aim. Uh, this is probably not going to be my final version of the armored car. One reason for this being... Aiming down, if you aim down too far, your little aim assist machine gun, which you can see tucked away inside the tank there, uh, does not work. So if I'm aimed down too far, it starts to actually hit the body. It's not a major issue, but it is something I want to fix before I actually have the full official armored car, I guess. This is released, and if you want to play with it, it is there. I do believe it is the armored car Mark 8. And if you want to rip the cannon from that, you can. But I do plan on updating this in the future to make it much better. Uh, this has little to no armor on it, so you're not going to really survive many hits. But I do have some designs in the works for implementing armor systems into future tanks. So now that I've done enough rambling, I'm going to go ahead and place one of these. Here we go. We're going to take a couple of pot shots at it. Quick, let's just line it up to the front. You might be able to survive a hit or two if it hits right here, dead center in your body. You might actually lose your wheels because of that, but you will likely be able to survive. So real quick, let's aim up. Fire there. There we go. Aim. Fire. That was a nice hit to the side of the turret. That probably knocked the gun out. I wouldn't be surprised. No, it appears the gun is intact. Is it fully intact? Yes, the gun is fully intact right now. I'm really happy with that. Okay. Let's get back over to ours. I guess I could have shot at ours from the half-destroyed one. That probably would have been a good idea. But I didn't want to do that. Get in here, grab this. And let's drive a little bit so I can show off the aiming a little bit more. Aim up. Shoot. And the round usually goes a bit higher than the machine gun at this range. And there goes the turret and the seat, and here comes the chassis chasing at us. Eh, I guess we can try and shoot at a moving target. No reason why we couldn't. Except for it's not moving anymore, it's now stuck against the tree. Fire. I think we just destroyed the engines because it stops making noise. That one phased through it. Which is something I've noticed with this cannon. I didn't say much about it. But this cannon is a little bit less powerful than the bearing glitch cannons. Which means it doesn't phase through items as often. Which was actually... It was a perk when shooting the old bearing glitch cannons. But if you're on the receiving end, it was really annoying. Because no matter how, many, how much armor you had, the round would go straight through half of it anyway. Uh, this can makes it a bit more fair for each opponent to actually be able to design and use armor. So overall I'm really happy with this design, however I do plan on iterating it in the future. So if you did enjoy this episode please leave a like, any suggestions leave them in the comments down below. If you're the challenge what I'm doing please subscribe, it helps a lot. And right now, shares help the channel the most. So if you do help the channel, please share this episode with a friend. 
I'm going to take one last shot here. Try and hit that tree off in the distance. Maybe you can see where I'm aiming. I want to try and hit the base of the tree. And I know at this range I need to aim a little high. Right about there. So I'm going to end it here. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for sticking around. And until next time, peace.